Jackson Radio Show. Oh my gosh, say it ain't so. Welcome. Well, not my show, Kevin Jackson. I'm glad you guys are here for the Kevin Jackson Show. But tell me there's not more Russian doping. Please tell me that this is not the case. I'm hearing things. Russian doping? The, I mean, let me tell you. And what may make the fake Russian collusion narrative against President Trump look like child's play? We have a new developing scandal. The Russians have been accused of doping for some time. You, you guys may not follow the Olympics, but the entire Russian delegation in, I guess, in the Summer Olympics was like, you can't even come back. You guys are doping. We know what you're doing. I mean, they made Lance Armstrong look like a choir boy. They've been using this drug called meldonium. Now, I talked about this, believe it or not, in tennis. Uh, sure, wasn't it Maria Sharapova? Pretty Russian girl. I, guess, I don't know if she's Russian, but she's Lithuanian or something. But Sharapova, she was accused of using meldonium. And, and they tied it to like, oh, she has some sort of an issue. And she had to take meldonium. And we didn't know what its benefits were. <laughs> And let me tell you, meldonium, the minute I heard about it, I started reading about what it does. I was like, shoot, where can I get this? I was going to fly. I think you have to pick it up. And it, it's one of these Ania countries, you know, like Latvania, Slovenia, Slovenia, Transylvania. It's one of those countries. I was ready to go get me some meldonium. Here's what it said. I, I found this from a site. It says meldonium shifts the metabolism so that it's geared more towards carbohydrate metabolism rather than fat metabolism. Using carbohydrates as a fuel requires less oxygen to produce energy. So this change can be beneficial in low oxygen conditions. In heart disease, the heart muscle is deprived of oxygen. And the effects of meldonium have been shown to be very beneficial in this disease state. There's also evidence to suggest that meldonium could be, be could be beneficial under low oxygen conditions induced by intense endurance exercise. So one of the reviews of the effects on meldonium on exercise, on exercise, they listed these benefits. So here it is. Decreased levels of lactate and urea in the blood. So it means that you're not building up as much lactic acid. You know, you're just... <laughs> And I don't know about you. That's one of my major problems, man. You start, I cramp, I get, to, I cramp easier. I don't know what urea is, but it isn't in your blood. So it takes lactic lactate and urea out of your blood, which means that you can go longer. Okay. Improved economy of glycogen level of glycogen increased in the cells during long lasting exercise. Now I can only presume glycogen is from glycol you know, or which, uh, you know, glucose and that kind of thing. I, and, and again, I'm not a chemist. If there's a chemist in the house, let me know. But I'm guessing this is letting your sugars fire, right? Then it says improve functional parameters of heart activity, increase physical work cap capabilities, increase rate of recovery after maximum and submaximal loads, activate CNS functions and protects against stress. So think about you know, an endurance sport like the, the biathlon in, a, in the Winter Olympics. I don't know if you've seen these. These guys skate around this thing uphill, downhill, etc. They have to stop, and then they have to think, and they shoot. And they got to hit five targets, and they skate again. Well, I don't know if you've ever done anything like that. It is, go try to go uphill on your skis. It is tough as all get out. So, I can only imagine meldonium is going to be a big deal because not only does it give you less lactic acid buildup, when you finally get settled, you're less stressed. You're like, okay, bada bing, 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 and boom, you're off again. So it helps. I can see runners. I can see other athletes where strength endurance counts, you know, taking this drug. But curlers, you know what curling is, right? Of course, you're, you're why everybody. Well, it's funny. You watch curling. You don't think it's that big of a deal, you, but you just find yourself hooked. You know, it's like shuffleboard at the bar. You just find yourself going, this is so cool. You know, watching these guys sweep that ice and curve the, the curling rock, whatever they stone around things and stuff. It's really kind of interesting, but it doesn't require steroids. 
I jokingly said it would shock me to find out that my favorite professional bowler was juicing. You know, make, taking, taking the drug, taking it to hit on steroids. Or what about a drag racer? I mean, he's in a race for five seconds. And they go, well, we have to disqualify so-and-so to drag racer because he's been juicing. Are you kidding? And curling falls into this category. Have you seen curling? I mean, really. So here's what they do. They start off in a little, what looks like a starting block. And they've got this ball, this rock that's got a handle on it. It's going to slide on the ice. And then they slowly go towards the line and they have to release the curler before the line, you know, before it get, they get to a line. And then, the, little, then the, the ice does all the work. I mean, it takes all of, I'm going to guess and say five to 10 pounds of pressure. Even when you're trying to knock somebody's rock stone out of the, the circle, it's a pretty easy job is all I'm trying to tell you. So you don't have to juice taking cur- doing curling Maybe a little flexibility because they get down there kind of low. So anyway, I don't know that I'm buying this. That a Russian took curling, <coughs> took drugs in order to curl. So here was what they, they said about this. This is an article. It says the Russians are participating in Pyeongchang Games as Olympic athletes from Russia. The International Olympic Committee suspended the Russian Olympic Committee last year in connection with a massive doping scheme at the 2014 Sochi Games, but allowed 168 athletes to compete in, in neutral uniforms and without the national flag. Kroshelnitsky is the guy who's been accused of doping for curling, and he's going to potentially lose his... Uh, he, By the way, he was a bronze medalist. This is a skill game that, that doesn't require a lot of muscle power. But they're saying this dude was doping. And uh, they somebody was saying that they think they're going to take his medals away. And then, but here's what they're going to say. Curling players don't need meldonium. We don't need to be faster, higher, stronger. This isn't what we do. But how to explain what they found in Alexander's blood? He's an absolutely honest athlete and a great guy. No one, including myself, understands it. But then it says this. <laughs> Solzhen believes the U.S. security services had somehow put something in the Kroshelnitsky's water or tampered with his drug test sample. He didn't speculate on how it could hample, ha- how it could ha- ha- happen, hample. <laughs> and now look, in the old days, I might have dismissed these allegations by the Russians. I would have said, these Ruskies are just jealous of us. But then I remember we got the FBI, the people who tried to do to the president what they've done. And I no longer dismiss these allegations as complete nonsense because I'm seeing what they're doing to Donald Trump. Trying to tie Donald Trump. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. So I'm a little bit concerned now. Why wouldn't the FBI collude with Hillary Clinton to make the Russians look like dope fiends? Huh? Hmm? And you know what comes next? They would then associate President Trump with said dope fiend Russians and then try to impeach him by saying he's selling melodonin Melodonium, is that what it's called? Melodonium to the Russians or something. You know they're going to try to do something sneaky. There is no reason for that Russian to dope in a sport that has all the excitement of watching a sloth climb a tree. Um, look, don't misunderstand me. I'm into it. And maybe you are too. I'm watching it. I'm intrigued with the strategy. Okay. But as a sport goes, come on. Come on. Doping? Seriously, if Hillary Clinton and, and Mueller were going to try to do something sneaky, why would they do this? Why would they choose something so obvious? Now, you're saying, Kevin, are you accusing him of it? Yes, I am. I'm officially accusing the Hillary Clinton campaign, Barack Obama, of trying. Let me put it this way. If there was if Donald Trump is even watching, if he watched what's his guy's name, Schultz Nietzsche, if he watched this Russian curl, you know, they're going to try to associate him with it. They will tell, then they'll say Donald Trump doped his, his stuff at a, you know, at a part. He met with him or they'll say Sessions did it at a meeting that Sessions doesn't even remember. <laughs> right. I'm just, it, it may sound crazy folks, but I'm telling you, this is the kind of stuff. This is where rumors start. And then you find out later. Ooh, that was so true. Doping and curling. And this, this couple which brings up a whole other issue, by the way. Why is are there men's, women, and co-ed curling? I don't get it. The women, 
can do just as good as curling as the men. So why separate them? And then why put them back together to have a duel? This is not like tennis where a dude can serve 10 mile an hour faster than a woman or whatever. This is a sport where a woman's finesse works just as good as a man. She can push that rock as good as any dude. I don't understand this. I, and I want I do want to understand why is this? Why are we do like, for example, now I, I could do it in the skiing. Maybe men can ski a little faster, you know, things like that. But there are certain sports in the Olympics. I'm going, why mix it up? Why do the women and the men in the, in the ice skating, why do they have to be separate? Oh, because the men can do four, four, what do they call it? Four turns? Psh, whatever. Kevin Jackson on the Black Sphere Radio Network. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS or state? The secret to avoiding the IRS nightmare is to seek professional representation. My friends at Security Tax Associates provide the most cost-effective and ethical representation in the industry while helping to avoid seizures, levies, and wage garnishments. Security Tax Associates is here to ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to permanently eliminate any possibility of future tax burdens once and for all. For a free, no-obligation consultation, contact Security Tax Associates, 844-779-4177. That's 844-779-4177. 844-779-4177 or visit them at securitytaxassociates.com.